texts we're going to look at today. But um, I'm just going to read for you from Psalm 133, verse number one. The Bible reads, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God wants churches to be unified. God wants there to be unity within the local church. Uh, the, and what we see here, in, especially in Ephesians chapter 4 and in other places in Scripture, the, the church is referenced as a body. That there are different members of this body. And in order for the body to be functioning properly, the church needs to be in unity. We need to be in one accord, in one place, and, and all having the same mind. And, and you know, it's, which should be esteeming others better than ourselves and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and making sure our doctrine is pure, you know, and, and, and just living our lives for Christ. That should be our main goal, and that is what God wants there to be within the church. Now, we're going to jump into to Ephesians chapter 4 as we read this. Keep in mind, you know, what the Bible is teaching us here that with all humility and with all long, long suffering, we want to try to keep this unity of faith within the church because it's so important. Now, we don't take this to the extreme that ecumenicalism takes it to of just saying, well, anyone that just calls themselves Christian, we all have to be in unity and there should be no divisions ever over doctrine or things like that. That's ridiculous. There needs to be division. We need to be separate, but we, that, that's why there's different churches. We are a body here. We don't believe in the Holy Catholic Church, which Catholic means universal. We don't believe in this universal concept that everybody's part of a church. Why? Because the word churches means a congregation. We're all congregated here. <coughs> the whole, all the people who are saved in the world are not gathered together in one place. Right. Not right now. We believe in the local church, and we believe our local church ought to have unity. We ought to be together in one place, in one accord, doing what's right, and we ought to value that, and in the, the spirit of having unity, treat people with long-suffering, and try to work with people, to, to just try to get everyone on the same page. So let's start going through Ephesians chapter 4 and look at the way the Bible explains how we ought to do this. Verse number one, the Bible reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is the goal. He's saying, you know, we need lowliness, meekness. <coughs> Why? Because when you're proud and lifted up, that's going to be causing problems in itself. You're not, you're not going to be able to stay at unity or at least stay at peace with people when you got one guy who's just full of himself and thinks he knows everything and wants to tell everyone else how everything is. That doesn't work out very well. We need to have lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, and be able to forbear one another. You know, everyone's going to be at different levels of growth in their, in their spiritual life, in their walk with God. We, we should be having new believers, experienced believers, all different kinds of believers. So as a result, there's going to be people who might just not know certain things in the Bible. Guess what? There's some things in the Bible I don't know. Amen. Okay? There's some things that you don't know. So... We're going to try to make sure that we're all together in the doctrines. Now, the, the basic doctrines, yeah, that's what's going to separate us from a lot of other churches in general anyways. We're King James only. We believe in salvation by grace through faith alone. We don't just give it lip service. We actually believe that works are not required at all. That you don't have to turn from any sins. You don't have to live this righteous life. You don't have to do any of these things to be saved. You just have to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he saved your soul. Amen. 